Hello, everyone. Hey, this is Jeff. It's Jeff Schick Legal. Hope you're doing well on this Memorial Day. I wanted to talk today about retail arbitrage and receipts, and especially how do you deal with some of these stores where the UPC or item number isn't clearly marked on the receipt. Um, so yesterday, I went on a little bit of a sourcing trip. I went to TJ Maxx, Home Goods, uh, the Under Armour Outlet Store, and then I also went to uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, also went to Petco as well. Um, from there, we've got a whole variety of different products, each with different uh, barcodes, UPC stickers, and receipt formats. And we'll get to talk about all of them today. Um, I'm going to make a special video about how do you submit receipts to Amazon when it comes to, you know, especially like TJ Maxx and Home Goods stores. So be on the lookout for that video. I'm hoping to launch that within the next couple of days here as well. Um, but in particular, this one, this video is just going to be talking about what to expect when you're sourcing in terms of, um, what they'll give you in terms of receipt and what kind of pictures you might need to get as proof for Amazon. Um, so without further ado, I guess let's get started. So first place on my uh, sourcing trip was Petco. So I went there to get some, some kitten food for a new member of the household. Um, one thing that I noticed right away when I got the receipt was that it was uh, on this receipt. It says the item number is 00303363. Um, and the description is not very good either. Beyond that, it's WHD-CAT 5.5Z Kitten. Now, I've got this can in front of me. I can look at it, and when I've got the can and I've got, you know, the receipt, I can look at it pretty easily and figure out what's going on here. So, for instance, it's Wholehearted Brand, um, so that must be the WHD. It's cat food, so C-A-T, obviously. 5.5, it is a 5.5-ounce can, so that makes sense, and then it's Kitten um, type. So that makes sense why it says kitten. But imagine you're working for Amazon and you see thousands of receipts a day, maybe even hundreds an hour, and you get this receipt and you're now tasked with determining whether the product is authentic or inauthentic. And all we've get, been given is just this receipt that says, you know, three zero three three six three three, And then what I just mentioned, um, not very clear. And it's going to make it really hard for me as that person working at Amazon to say, yeah, I want to approve this and say that this seller wasn't selling inauthentic products. Um, gets even more unclear when you look, start thinking about like UPC codes. So if we look at the UPC on this can, the UPC is 8004433766737. Uh, very different than the 30333633. Big problem, especially for someone at Amazon who might not have the, uh, one, the time to figure out what they're looking at or the um, maybe the autonomy to make those sort of a decisions and say, well, this must be the same product. Um, what's going to happen? Likely they're just going to reject it. They're going to say the receipt's not good enough. Um, now, it does get a, there is a, a glimmer of hope here. If we look at the can, we can see that right above the barcode, it says SKU 30333633. Bingo. That's the same number that we saw before. So when we're sourcing at a store like Petco, and it appears that they print, you know, a, a, a internal SKU on the receipt, as well as the SKU is on the can, that's going to become important for us because at the end of the day, we've got to make those connections. Now, I'm going to make another video all about how to annotate receipts and what to submit. Um, but if I was wanting to be extremely safe, what I would probably do in this case is I would actually grab the, uh, you know, grab your camera when you're sending in this product, take a picture, you know, look right here at this the SKU and the barcode, take a picture of that so that we've got some proof for Amazon later on that what we are sending them the receipt for matches what we purchased and what we sold on the listing. So next on my sourcing trip, I went to TJ Maxx and Home Goods. Um, now these are all one store together. So you're able to, you know, obviously the receipt's going to say TJ Maxx and Home Goods on it. Um, looking at the receipt, it's not very descriptive. That does tend to raise some problems for Amazon. Uh, there's also a major problem on here is that I purchased four items, or at least I had four items in my cart, but on the, uh, on the receipt, there's only three items. What, what I obviously have to take the one back, um, what we figured out is I've got two pairs of socks, a t-shirt and a sponge holder. looks like one of the pairs of socks did not get scanned. So first things first, I want to take that back and get a, get it scanned properly and paid for. The reason being is that if Amazon gets an inauthentic complaint and I don't have a receipt for it, I have no way to prove that these are authentic, even though we know that TJ Maxx and Home Goods don't sell counterfeit items. There's, if you don't pay for it, you have no way to prove that it's uh, that it's real, and also it is stealing. So uh, I will be taking that one back to pay for it tomorrow. 
Um, but long story short, uh, looking at this receipt, it's not very clear what's on it. So for instance, we have kitchen excess, um, obviously goes for accessories. We have men's furnish, not sure what that is. Um, and then we have men's active, uh, looking at those, obviously, as you can tell, it's, uh, not exactly the most detailed receipt, especially considering that I've got a pair of Reebok socks, a pair of Adidas socks, uh, and a Nike dry fit t-shirt, uh, as well as a sponge holder. You would never know that from this receipt. So let's talk about that a little bit. Now on each of these items, the reason I picked them up is that they each present a different challenge. So on this pair of Adidas, you'll see that the uh, TJ Maxx sticker is right there on the back with the manufacturer's UPC. This is probably the easiest one to submit as a uh, for, for Amazon. But here's one that gets a little bit more challenging. We have a pair of Reebok socks. There's your TJ Maxx tag right on the front. There's your manufacturer barcode on the back. The problem here, obviously, is that the manufacturer barcode and the TJ Maxx sticker are not close together. Um, another issue pops up when we come to uh, to this Quiznars holder. Um, on here, it refers to things as a style number. It doesn't say item, it says style number. Uh, TJ Maxx, it doesn't say style number at all, so that's also different. Um, and then I picked up this shirt. It's interesting. So we've got your manufacturer on a hang tag, so the Nike manufacturer's hang tag right here. Um, and then we've got a TJ Maxx hang tag right here. Again, pros is a very unique challenge for submitting to Amazon to prove that these are all authentic. Um, so what would we want to do when you're sourcing these types of products? Documentation is key. You're going to want to take pictures of the hang tag here, like this manufacturer's hang tag. You're also going to want to take pictures of this tag. Reason being is that the number on this tag, which is uh, 85956, is the only thing that matches on this receipt that says men's active 85956. Uh, without that sort of proof, there's no way to do it. Now, if I was going to be really creative, what I would figure out is I would actually probably take a picture with them together like so. You know, try, you know, when you're taking your photos and you can take multiple, um, more is better when it comes to Amazon. The reason being is that if you, if you don't take photos of this and you later have a, and say, for instance, you get a 72 hour notice for your account, um, you're going to wish you'd taken more photos. Uh, data storage is getting incredibly cheap every day. You know, prices of computers come down even more. I think it's every year the data on computers, like storage space doubles. So, you know, we're at a point now where, it would be silly to try to conserve megabytes and potentially cost your entire business. Documentation is key. Take as many photos as possible, especially when it's unclear. Pro a product like this, this Adidas socks here, this is probably sufficient. All of it, you take a photo of this one right here and you're going to be good because if you needed to prove authenticity, you've got the, you know, the TJ Maxx tag and your UPC code right next to each other. Pretty easy. This one's a little bit more challenging, the Reebok socks. The reason being is that your TJ Maxx uh, tag is on the front, manufacturer's tag is on the back. Uh, what I would probably do in this case is take pictures of both for sure. Um, and then you might even take side pictures, you know, all four sides. So that way, if there's ever a question for Amazon, they can see that this, you know, continuity, that it clearly is the same product because you're getting it from multiple angles. And so that you didn't just, you know, somehow, you know, get a photo of one pair of socks, with the TJ Maxx tag, another pair of socks with the back, tag on the back. Cuisinart is another one. It's pretty easy. Uh, it's right there on the back as well. Um, but we will want to talk when, in my next video, when we talk about how to annotate and what to submit, we'll talk about that specifically so that people at Amazon know exactly what they're looking for. On my sourcing journey, next I went to Dick's Sporting Goods, picked up some uh, different Nike and Under Armour stuff. Now, when we look at this receipt, we'll notice right away that they print the manufacturer's UPC. Great. That makes it much easier. So here's a pair of shorts that I purchased. Uh, we can see that the, ta the uh, UPC for these shorts, 194513, uh, is... Right here on the top, 194-513-887-6262. Same thing, right there, they match. So what would I do if I'm submitting to Amazon? This receipt should be enough on its own because of the fact that it's got your manufacturer's UPC. If I wanted to be extra cautious and I had the bandwidth, I would also take a picture of the hang tag with the product just in the future because, again, data is cheap, but labor obviously takes time, so you would want to think about it. Um, just, you know, it's cost-benefit analysis. But if you have the, you know, time and you, you know, to be taking photos of every product you sell, I would definitely take a photo of the hang tag 
because again, it just further proves that this product that I'm holding matches the product on the receipt. Uh, last, I went to the Under Armour outlet, um, picked up some stuff. I've particularly got everything was on 50% off sale or 40% off sale. So I got a whole bunch of stuff here to make sure that I had enough to get a very decently long receipt. Uh, point being was that I wanted to be able to show in the next video, how do you submit long receipts to Amazon? Um, that's, uh, that we'd be able to talk about that. Um, but again, right here, what's really great, this one actually has a lot of detail. So for instance, it says, um, you know, like I want to find this t-shirt, this, uh, polo shirt here, which was an ISO chill graphic polo. And right here on the receipt, it's really easy to find. It's got both the, um, uh, UPC code, a perfect match on the UPC code, which is great. It even says UA ISO chill graphic polo size, color, all that sort of stuff right there on the receipt, perfectly matching this tag here, which has all that same information. Um, again, we would want to, to, uh, submit as much as possible. If you have the bandwidth, take photos of the tag because it proves that this stuff is authentic. If you don't have bandwidth for that, then at the very minimum, you do need to save this entire receipt. Um, so now we talked about tags. We talked about receipts. One thing that we haven't talked about yet is actually storing the receipt. So I mentioned a couple of times saving the receipt. Um, one thing we need to be extra clear on is that these receipts are made from a type of paper that is known as thermal paper. Um, if you leave them in the sun, they will fade. If you leave them in a box, they will fade. So what does that mean? Well, Amazon can ask for receipts for up to 365 days after you've sold an item. Um, and if they ask for receipts, they generally want all of the items of that ASIN that you've sold in the last 365. So one thing in particular that I did is that when I was at Dick's Sporting Goods, I bought the exact same item that I bought from the Under Armour outlet store. Um, if I was to send in two of those to Amazon, well, then there'd be, a, um, I would actually have to include both of these receipts. And it's important that I do because if I don't include them, then again, Amazon's going to reject my appeal, especially if it's an inauthentic or an IP claim, because they asked for 365 days worth. And I've got two that I purchased. I presumably would have sent in two to Amazon. And if you only give them one receipt, that's only half the battle. Um, so now talking about receipts um, and how they fade, think about storage of this receipt. Digital is best. Digital makes it easy for you to find it. Um, and it also makes it so you can reprint it. Now, for instance, let's say Amazon, you know, ha, you know, I want to make sure I've saved this in a format because Amazon wants to get me for an inauthentic claim on these uh, shorts right here that I purchased from Dick's Sporting Goods. Well, I would not want to take this receipt and highlight it at this stage because if I take the original, what happens if Amazon comes back and says, well, now we actually need a um, an inauthentic claim for one of these other items on here. I don't know what they are. It's not easy to figure out. It says shorts. So I'll just assume that this is some sort of Nike short. Um, so what if they come back for that? Well, again, uh, it would, if you've already submitted this receipt and it's all marked up that you're going to have a pretty big issue. So when you submit receipts to Amazon and I'll have a whole video about how do you annotate receipts properly, make sure you're doing it on a copy and not the original, but make sure you scan the original the day you get it. Um, it'll make it easier for you to find it. Sometimes stuff gets caught off, cut off. So again, keeping the originals, even if you have it digital is important. Um, and make sure you back them up to the cloud. And for a couple years ago, I had a seller who got suspended for inauthentic complaints and she had been through a natural disaster. Unfortunately, during that disaster, she lost all of her written records and also all of her electronic records. She did not have her receipts backed up to the cloud. And then Amazon came asking for a 72 hour notice for some of those items that were where the records were lost. We did get her reinstated. Um, I was able to work with Amazon legal and explain the situation, but it did take quite a bit of back and forth. And it was a huge leap of faith on Amazon's part to give her a second chance. And of course, Amazon doesn't have to do that. They, they did it out of the, you know, because it was the right thing to do, but they did not, you know, have to do it since she didn't have the documentation that sellers are supposed to have. So it is important that you save that documentation, um, multiple places. You know, if you're saving it on a computer, which I, of course, as just said, everyone should scan this stuff, make sure you back it up to the cloud as well. Hope that this video has been helpful. My next video that I'm going to be uh, launching is going to be a multi-part video series. One video will be about how do you deal with long receipts. I'm going to have another video that's how do you submit receipts when the UPC code is a perfect match. 
Uh, I'm also going to have a, a video specifically about TJ Maxx and home goods and how do you submit those receipts for an authentic claim. And then I've got uh, one last video which, that I'll be doing, which is going to be about like the Petco case that I explained, where what do you do when it's got a, you know, a SKU number instead of a uh, UPC number on the receipt. So we'll be talking about that one as well. I hope you all have a great day. As always, if you have any questions about anything that I've discussed and you're one of my clients, feel free to schedule one of those complimentary calls with me. I absolutely look forward to talking to you guys about this sort of stuff. It's fun. They're, it's better to talk to it on a preventative basis than after Amazon starts asking for the information. It's never a bother. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions about what you've seen. Just go to my client portal and schedule one of the calls. All right. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you. If you've liked this video, please uh, hit the subscribe button below so that way you can get the, all of my videos as soon as I post them. Uh, if you're not a client of mine yet and you have questions about anything that you've seen here, please uh, go to my website, jeffschick.com. There you can uh, sign up for my monthly retainer. It's $89 a month. gives you unlimited calls with me. You can also send me unlimited emails once you're a client. I'd be happy to go over any of these uh, topics that we've discussed on a one-on-one -on -one basis with you. Hope you're having a great day and look forward to hearing from you.